Okay, so, so the next page shows you an example of a sheer failure. A sheer failure. If you have a plate, if you have a plate right here, if you punch out this slug, if you punch out this slug, then you really, shear, it shears out. All right, it shears out of the plate. It shears out of the plate. All right, so a punch is used to make a slot in the 10 millimeter thick plate. Uh, find the minimum force required to punch the slot if the plate shears at 250 MPA. So sometimes I give you all this information and I ask you what is the stress? Or sometimes, like this one, I tell you the stress and ask you for something else. So don't be alarmed. It's not like we're doing this problem backwards. You know, this problem, you're told the stress, the shear stress is 250 MPA. Find the force P or find that punches it out. All right, so let's look at this slug. Let's look at this punch. Let me try to draw it here. All right, it, it got punched out right here. So we've got P that is punching it out. And we have V that was trying to keep it in. All right, we're still in static equilibrium, summing the force in Y, P, V is equal to P, right? V is equal to P. We know that tau is V over A, right? We know that tau is V over A. We're told that the tau is 250 MPA. We want to find the P or, or the V, we want to find the force, so that's kind of our unknown. All right, what area is this area? What area is the shear force acting over? Now, sometimes it's real easy and real clear, you know, if, if you cut it right here, the, the area that the shear force would be the cross-sectional area. But I don't know if you can tell this. I, I, like I said, I think it helps to go ahead and Make it fail. Go ahead and shear it off and look at the area that has sheared. The area would be this area right here all the way around that slug. Do you see this? The area that the shear force is acting would be this area all the way around. So we just have to find that area all the way around. It's almost like a cylinder on the ends, you know, a rectangle on the sides. So what would the area be? It would be this length of 75 times the height, the, the thickness. All right, so the area would be, so first I'm calculating this rectangle right here, which would be 75 millimeters by a height of 10 millimeters. I'm gonna multiply it times two because I got the same thing on the back side of it. All right, now I need to calculate the area around here, so that length times a height of 10. So now I'm about to calculate, let me do it in black, this area around that cylinder on the end. Um, so that length would be pi times diameter divided by two. All right, so this length, this arc length, pi diameter divided by two, that's how, if it's a whole circle, it's pi times diameter, right? This is half of one, so it's pi 
time pi diameter of 20 divided by 2. The height right here is still 10. And then I've got the same thing on the other side, so I'm giving it another 2. Now, I think sometimes the hardest part of these problems is that, is visualizing the area that the shear force is acting over. You see that one right there. You see that that's the area that the shear force is acting over. And so then I would get V is 532. Actually, I would get 532,000 newtons. Um, and so 532 kilonewtons, which is the force P. Okay, does, does do you see why that's the area that it's sheared off of. Yes, question. 